What's up guys? So I wanted to do this video for a few reasons. One was just to kind of walk through the process that I went through to arrange my song Zanzibar Land, which is a video game music arrangement from the soundtrack of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Second, I just kind of wanted a, a bit of a time capsule. I just wanted to document some of the technical stuff that I did. And third, if you're a video game music composer or arranger, you might find this useful. So a little bit about Metal Gear 2. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake came out for the MSX in 1990. It didn't see the light of day in the US until 2006 when it came out as part of the Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence re-release. I played the game for the first time around 2006, 2007, and some of the impressions were lost on me at the time, but for some reason, I, in it, which I can't remember, I picked up the game again this past summer and realized that like a lot of the things that Kojima does, the game was ahead of its time in terms of gameplay, soundtrack, uh, the cinematics, uh, the story, like, all of the above. When I heard the soundtrack again, I said, I want to do my own video game music arrangement. So I ended up picking three songs. I did some of my own original stuff inter interweaved in there as well. But my biggest challenge was how do I figure out all of these songs by ear? So what kind of broke the logjam was a video that Viking Guitar did that showed how to dump the sound channels from NES and SNES games into WAV files. And then you can import them into your DAW, which in my case is Reaper, where at that point you can kind of play with each channel or track individually and figure it out from there. That was still really time consuming, but then I figured out a trick that I think would be really, really useful, uh, which was definitely useful for me. And again, uh, if you're a techie and you do this kind of stuff, I will hope you find that all of what I'm about to show you as useful as well. So anyway, let's hop over to the emulator and we'll show you just a little bit of the game, a little bit of the soundtrack and how to get this process started. All right, so what we have running here is the emulator open msx which is here on the left and then just a windows explorer uh, folder that i'm going to explain what this does in a minute so this song is, is this is just coming from the opening cinematic of metal gear 2 solid snake and what we want to do is dump the music that's coming from the eight channels of the msx sound chip as well as the sound chip that is on the Metal Gear 2 cartridge itself into WAV files over here. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll just kind of do, I'll show you how this works first before we actually capture it. If I hit F10, it brings up this console and most of the things that you have to do uh, from an under the hood perspective with OpenMSX uh, has to be done from a command line. So I already have the command that I need right here. So it's record channels, first argument start, which is self-explanatory, and the next two arguments are the sound chips from where I want to capture the sound. So the PSG chip comes on the MSX itself with three channels and SCC are five additional channels that comes from the chip on the cartridge itself. And then the prefix parameter just says, I want to put these files in a specific folder and just prefix them really, and it's just really for organizational purposes. So we're going to change the name here. Um, we'll just say Solid Snake because I believe that the name of the song is the theme of Solid Snake. So we're going to run that. And you're going to see right here that we have eight WAV files being written out to disk right now. So here's the three PSG ones and here's the five SCC ones. Now, if we want to, if we want to stop, that's simple as just doing record channels stop. And then you'll see the file sizes will finalize, meaning that we are done. So now we're going to go to the song that we actually want to capture, which is uh, Zanzibar, uh, Zanzibar Breeze. I'm going to close this, hit the space bar. It'll bring us to the title screen. We're not going to do anything here. We want, uh, we want the, the next cinematic to run. If I hit space again, it'll actually start the game. So I'm going to hit F10. I'm going to bring up the console again. I'm going to get ready to record this. And I'll just prefix this with with uh, ZB for Zanzibar Breeze. So we're going to hit enter. And now we're writing out uh, eight additional WAV files. And we're just going to let this run. Um, um, this song is, I believe, somewhere around two minutes. But obviously, we're going to skip ahead. Uh, once these files are done, um, then we can hop into Reaper, import them, and take it from there. Now we're in Reaper and 
this happens to be my DAW of choice, you could probably do this with any other DAW. One of the plugins I'm going to be using is specific to Reaper. However, it is a VST plugin, which you can download for free among all of the other plugins off of Reaper's website. Let's start the process of just getting these waveforms into Reaper. So here's that folder that I showed earlier where I dumped all the WAV files, and we're going to focus on these eight. So just keep this simple, drag and drop. We want separate tracks. And there's our WAV files. So let's kind of make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Now I'm going to turn the master fader all the way down because this can get pretty loud. So we're going to slowly bring that in. Yeah. Okay. So let's just go through some of these tracks individually. Just solo some of these. So that's kind of like a melodic line. That's percussion. Can't hear it. Let's bring that up a little bit. It's like bass. Uh, another melodic line. Uh, that's that's a pretty interesting sound, but you kind of get the idea. Okay, so let's focus on one of the melodies. So in my arrangement, this is, ends up, ended up being a lead guitar line. Now let's figure out, now again, we can manipulate playback speed. So I can sit there and try to figure it by ear, but here's where the secret sauce comes in. I'm gonna create a new track here called MIDI. And right on this track, we're going to add the Retune plugin. Now up until I figured out how to do this trick, I only used Retune to tune my guitar and my bass, but it actually has multiple applications, one of which I'm about to show you. So I'm just going to play this with Retune on it, and we'll just see what it does. So you can see, it's actually picking up all the notes. So we know what the notes are. now. What if we could print them to MIDI? That's exactly what we're going to do next. So if I check this box, which says send MIDI events when pitch changes, that does exactly what it says it does. <laughs> so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to set up a send from this track to my MIDI track. And let's go ahead and play this. Now I'm going to bring down the fader here on the MIDI track and you can see that this is starting to receive the MIDI events but in order to capture them we need to do one other thing so I'm going to right click the record button and change record output to record output MIDI so at this point if I hit record it will play this track and send the MIDI it will send the MIDI events to this MIDI track. So let's give it a shot. It would help if I press the record button on the MIDI track. All right, so you get the idea. Now, I'm going to solo this MIDI track. Now, if I play it, you don't hear anything because this is just data. We need to put a virtual instrument on it if we actually want to hear the notes. Now, you don't have to do this, but since it would probably help to hear it, I'm going to put a virtual instrument on top. So I'm going to use expand, which is just a, a VSTI that came with my MIDI controller. 
Uh, we'll move retune out of the way for now. Okay, now we just need to pick something. So let's do uh, soft leads, vintage synth lead. So let's play this again. Uh, I should probably turn this back up. Pretty neat, huh? Now, one thing is, if I look at this visually, this is this is probably ninety-five percent accurate. Uh, you can see that sometimes, like there'll be a pitch change, and uh, this uh, retune doesn't pick it up, and you can see like a little bit there. But I mean, th those are really, really minor issues. Uh, you can clean all that up. Like I can, I can get rid of this note, and then just move this back, and then I'll just make th make those two continuous notes. So what do you do with this? Once you've actually had this MIDI data, what I did was. I exported this out, so I just went to this uh, export project MIDI function here in Reaper, and like I said, you could uh, you could do this probably with your own DAW, but once I exported this MIDI out, I was able to import it into Guitar Pro, and then from there, I had a pretty solid blueprint of the one of the lead guitar lines in my video game music arrangement. You don't have to use Guitar Pro. If you use some other kind of transcription software, it should be able to import MIDI. At least I would think it would be able to. So, uh, you know, me being a dumb metalhead, uh, I play guitar. I can't even read sheet music, but I can import MIDI and read tabs well enough. And that piece of software takes care of that for me. All right, next I've hopped over to my full mix and I'll show you how that melodic line made it into the full mix and I'll solo that uh, particular lead guitar uh, just so you can hear how it sounds. So there you have it. I hope you found this interesting, especially uh, if you listen to my music and you just kind of wanted a behind the scenes look of uh, what I do from a technical perspective. And if you happen to be a video game music arranger or composer, maybe you would have found uh, some of the technical aspects of this uh, helpful to you as well as you compose your own uh, video game music arrangements. So thanks a lot. See you guys next time.